Hello, uh, I am King Harvey D. Flores, and I will be reporting about the brief background of a Yagi Uda antenna design. First is, a Yagi Uda antenna, commonly known as a Yagi antenna, is a directional antenna consisting of multiple parallel elements in a line. When we say directional antenna, meaning this antenna um, uh, works, uh, radiates or receives greater power in specific directions, allowing increased performance and reduced interference from unwanted sources. Uh, this makes the Yagi antenna a very good option for an antenna design. Uh, a Yagi anti antenna consists of a single driven element connected to the trans transmitter or receiver with a transmission line and additional parasitic elements which are not connected into the transmitter or receiver. A so-called reflector and one or more directors. The Yagi antenna was invented in 1926 by Shintare, Shintaro Uda of Tohoku Imperial University, Japan, with a lesser role played by his colleague Hidetsugu Yagi. Uh, the, the reflector element is slightly longer than the driven dipole, whereas the directors are a little shorter. The parasitic elements absorb and re-radiate the radio waves from the driven element with a different phase, modifying the dipole's radiation pattern. The waves from the multiple elements superpose and interfere to enhance radiation in a single direction, achieving a substantial increase and then as gain compared to a simple dipole. So as you have said, uh, a directional antenna or commonly known as a beam antenna is a better choice when designing an antenna because it allows um, increased performance and reduced uh, interference from unwanted, so unwanted sources. Thank you. Okay, so advantages. Uh, first, it is a compact in size and in and it is lightweight. Uh, it's because of the design and the materials that is used in the antenna. The antenna is built mostly with aluminum tubes that makes it light. Okay, and next, it offers wide bandwidth due to use of folded dipole. Um, basically, the folded dipole is an antenna with two conductors connected on both sides. Uh, the range of the frequency operates around uh, 3 kilohertz up to 3,000 gigahertz. Uh, the frequency that we are targeting is around 211 megahertz so that uh, it makes the frequency is within the range of the said type of antenna. Uh, next, it offers unidirectional radi radiation pattern which is reasonably good. Uh, the design of that uh, folded dipole in our Yagi Uda. Uh, it produces unidirectional because of its design that mm, the design produces half half wave uh, dipole that also produces omnidirectional pattern. Uh, it offers substance substance shall increase in directivity and gain compared to simple dipole antenna. Uh, and next, it is lower in cost and simple to build. The materials used in this is so minimal, me, uh, low cost and easy to find. And lastly, it can be mounted easily on vertical poles and or other poles with standard mechanical fixing. So this design is simply the one that is famous, especially on 2000, 2000s to 2012, I think, before the digital, digital box. Are <coughs> Hi, good day. 
Um, today, I will be reporting about the disadvantages of Yagi UDA antenna. Um, first, it does not offer very high gain. It offers moderate gain of about 7 decibels. And antenna length increases to achieve higher gain. Um, it is sensitive to frequency and the bandwidth is reduced if more number of director elements are used in array. Uh, the design is obstructive in nature. And also, I want to add that it does not offer very high gain limited around um, 20 decibels and it is prone to noise and it is all it is also prone to the atmospheric effect and therefore i conclude that the yagi uda antenna is a very practical form of rf antenna design suitable for the application requiring gain and direction and although the cost is higher than the basic antenna the yagi often offers the most cost-effective gain and directional option. Uh, thank you. Um, I will be discussing the parts of the antenna. So first is the boom. This is the part of the antenna to which all the other elements are fastened. It can be conductive or non-conductive. So um, as you can see here in the picture, um, the boom is in the middle part of the antenna. So this is the boom. So without the boom, um, the whole antenna is a lot less effective because basically this is the one that holds the directors, the driven element, and the reflector. So next is the directors. These are the parasitic elements of the antenna. They modify the radiation pattern of the radio waves that hit them re-radiating them with a different phase. This results in what is called constructive interference, which makes the overall signal stronger. So again, let's look at the picture. So um, these five shortest pieces in the antenna are the directors. So they are the parasitic elements of the antenna and they make the signal stronger. Okay, so next is the driven element, which is this one. This is a bit longer than the directors. So the driven element are the one that radiates or receives the radio waves for the antenna. And lastly, this is the reflector. So it is the longest piece of the antenna and is located behind the driven element from the directors. So the reflector is considered the rear of the antenna and it gives the antenna its directionality by blocking waves coming from this side from the driven element. So the next part is constructing the actual project which will be discussed by my other group mates. So For the materials that we need to our project for making Yangi Uda antenna, first we we'll create aluminum tube where the aluminum tubes are we use for similar structural tube and pipe. It is popular in structural use for both its high strength and great long lasting appearance. Second was the four millimeter RG59 closure table. RG59 cable has been around for a long time. This cable used to be what most people use for their cable TV connection, and it, it is very commonly installed in all their homes and commercial buildings. There was two pieces RG59 connection, a connect, connector na ating coaxial cable. Fourth was matching transformer. A matching transformer is used to convert 300 ohms and then uh, output to 75 ohms so that the low loss coaxial cable can be used to transport the TV signal from the antenna to the TV set. Fifth was the plastic holder, six was the metal screw, seven was the bolts and nuts, 
it was the square cup and lastly our 82 centimeters square boom uh, the materials that i said earlier was was all the materials that we needed to accomplish this project computations the frequency of channel 13 is 211.25 megahertz we're able to compute the lengths of the elements using the following formulas for the length of the reflector 150 must be divided by the target frequency so 150 over 211.25 is equal to 71 centimeters for the length of the driven element 143 must be divided by the target frequency so 143 over 211.25 is equal to 67.69 centimeters. For the length of the first director, 138 must be divided by the target frequency and then subtract it by 9 centimeters. So 138 over 211.25 minus 9 centimeters is equal to 56.33 centimeters. For the length of the second director, 134 must be divided by the target frequency and then subtract it by 9 centimeters. So 134 over 211.25 minus 9 centimeters is equal to 54.43 centimeters. And the reason for subtracting 9 centimeters is because during the initial testing of the antenna, there was another channel that was being received. So to prevent the channel from being received, the lengths of the two directors had to be reduced. So reduce them by 9 centimeters. And these are the lengths of the spacing between the elements. So the lengths are 32.134 centimeters, 21.639 centimeters, 14.576 centimeters, 9.818 centimeters. In this slide, we can see the actual features that was used uh, on the project. The second feature is the aluminum tubes that is fastened with plastic holders. The next slide, we can see uh, one of the aluminum tubes being connected to a matching transformer, which will be connected to the TV. Um, this aluminum tube will also be connected to the broom along with the other aluminum tubes with the place holders as we can see in the second picture. Uh, this is where the antenna is, is placed to see its effectiveness and uh, whether the antenna will be able to transmit uh, different channels and videos. Uh, as we can see in the video, uh, the Although it has this discrepancy, uh, the, the antenna is able to transmit uh, different channels. Uh, the only problem that we have in this project is that uh, we are experiencing discrepancy. That's why the video is not very clear. This is also one of the video. That's all. Thank you.